Ladies and gentlemen, the president. Mr. Chatterjee, Secretary Environment and Forest, Government of India, CRK Goel, Director Indira Gandhi National Forest Academy, Officers and Provisioners of Indian Forest Service. I welcome all of you. First of all, I would like to congratulate you for your successful competition in a very difficult competitive examination and <clears throat> achieving success therein. It speaks of your academic excellence. As it has been explained, the multiple level of training from different institutions, including management, military academy, police academy, apart from the common basic foundation in the academic institutions, and subsequently in your specialized academy, speaks the nature of your assignment which you are going to undertake after the provisionary period is over. All of you are aware this is one of the oldest service from 1865 onwards. It had, as it has been explained in the, by the director, that initially we did not have the facilities of training Naturally, after recruitment, the provisioners were trained outside. And from the first quarter of next century, 1926 onwards, you had the facilities in India, in the academy at, located at Deradu. But in between, India was going through the process of constitutional transformation and in Doze, the self-governance was in, injected in the administrative system of our country. After the passage of the Montagu James Bonds Act and before the passage of the Government of India Act 1935, in between, forest was transferred to the provincial governments as the subjects to be administered by them. Thereafter, even when we achieved independence and adopted the new constitution, forest used to be an important state subject. But the training used to be resumed and it continued. Of course, the name of the institution was subsequently changed. And through another amendment, it was brought within the concurrent list of the Constitution. The importance of the subject and the tasks assigned to you to preserve, maintain scientifically the forest coverage and all associated issues with it, including water harvesting, soil conservation, identification of the degradation of forests, suggesting remedial measures are very important. As I understand, there are persons belonging to different skills. Some of you have already obtained PhD degrees, 
in your respective fields of expertise. From other disciplines also, many of you have joined this office. I wish you all success. I understand during your this course of time, you have also undergone the training of parliamentary system procedures, training conducted by BPST. Ours is a parliamentary system. Therefore, the senior officers are entitled to know how the parliament functions, what responsibilities are discharged by the elected members of the people, and how those responsibilities are being discharged. I wish you all success in your endeavor, and particularly, I welcome the two officers from our close neighbor, His Majesty's Government of Bhutan. We have excellent relationship with Bhutan, and Bhutan has occupied a special place in preserving and protecting environment and preventing environmental degradation. The concept of His Majesty that not merely gross national product but gross national happiness, which is being propagated, includes one area of protection of environment. Inherently, there is no contradiction between the developmental requirement and environmental protection. It is the judicious application of mind and taking necessary steps to ensure that the balance is being maintained so that one need not be sacrificed for the other. With these words, I welcome you once again. You have just entered into a new career of yours, wherever you had been earlier. Some of you, not all, Quite a few of you have just joined the service by passing a very difficult competitive examination. I wish you all success and look upon you to contribute your services through dedication and commitment to the cause for which you are expected to serve the nation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.